So joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman out of Washington and senior whip of the House Democratic Caucus, Pramila Jayapal. Welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Uh, look, this bill, it won't make it through the Senate. The White House is still calling for a clean debt ceiling raise. My question is, what happens now? Well, Simone, it's, it's good to see you. And I think you really went through critical pieces of this ridiculous situation that we find ourselves in, which is that Republicans are being incredibly hypocritical when they are talking about throwing our economy into chaos. Because remember, they passed an, a clean debt ceiling under Trump three times, as Minority Leader Jeffrey said. And also, when they were in power, they increased the deficit by $2 trillion with their Republican tax scam in 2017. By the way, 50% of those tax cuts went to the top 5% of people. So to suddenly say that, oh, we want to watch spending, their first bill, this Congress, Simone, was to strip the IRS of agents who were going to go after wealthy tax cheats and bring in more revenue and reduce the deficit. So um, I, what happens now is they're going to push this with gamesmanship, threaten throwing the economy into a recession. Seven million people could lose jobs. You've already talked about the cuts that we would see to uh, DHS, but what about the cuts to Social Security, to Medicare, to Veterans Affairs? I mean, all yeah. of these things yeah. are going to get cut. And until they realize that we are not going to go along with that, with that we're not going to listen to hostage takers we are uh, we're going to hold our position. And at the end of it, they're going to have to pass a clean debt ceiling. So, uh, Congresswoman, folks out there may have forgotten, but I did not, that in the 118th Congress, this rules package uh, allows members to actually force a bill past committee and onto the floor with something that's called a discharge petition if it's signed by the majority of members. So is is that how... Uh, a clean debt ceiling bill comes to the floor. Is, is that a feasible path forward? That is absolutely a path. And I think it's going to rely, obviously, on a handful of responsible Republicans. It's also going to rely on the Senate. And Republicans in the Senate are going to have to speak to their House colleagues and tell them that they are not willing to throw the economy into a recession, we are not going to default on our debt. So the debt ceiling discharge petition could be one option, but also Republicans could just get reasonable and start to respond to their constituents who don't want these cuts either. Let's talk about the possibility of defaulting, uh, because I, I think people need to understand. Let's take some data from Third Way. In your state of Washington, according to Third Way, um, a think tank, more than 74,000 people would lose their jobs. The average mortgage would increase by more than $170,000, and more than 868,000 households could miss their Social Security check. That's a lot of that's a lot of folks, Congresswoman. So what are you telling your constituents about just the stakes here and how you're navigating this dilemma? Well, the stakes are enormous. I mean, under the Biden administration, we brought unemployment down to the lowest level in over half a century. We created, uh, you know, 10 million new jobs. Republicans are going to throw us back into a recession. People are going to lose their jobs. They're not going to be able to get their Social Security payments. Small businesses are not going to be able to get loans. Child care is not going to be available because child care workers are not going to get paid. So my constituents are saying to me, what is wrong with these Republicans? Because this is going to affect their own constituents. And like you said in your opening, Simone, it's important that people understand this is not the time to negotiate a budget. We have a time to negotiate a budget. That comes with the appropriations uh, process. This is about stuff that we already agreed to. Republicans couldn't get their extreme budget through, and, uh, and that's why they're trying to hold us hostage now. This is just about paying our bills. And then mm -hmm. once we do that, we can go into the process of negotiating a budget. Is this current conversation or dilemma, if you will, as it relates to the debt ceiling, um, is, it, is it putting the budget negotiations in jeopardy? Because the 2024 budget is supposed to be passed by Congress and then signed by the president no later than October 1st, if we're trying to avoid a government shutdown. 
Right. It does put everything into jeopardy because the longer this goes on, the less time we have to work on the rest of the things that we need to do. I think what Republicans are going to end up doing is passing some sort of a continuing resolution for the budget. You know, I have never liked that on the Democratic side or the Republican side. I think we should get these budgets done on time and take away the uncertainty for our agencies and for the American people. But I think that's what they're going to end up doing. And what they're trying to do is conflate these two things, say that, oh, we're being reasonable. We're giving you a proposal. No, they're giving us a proposal on the budget, which is fine. They should do that. And we're happy to talk about that. But the debt ceiling, we have raised it dozens of times. Democrats have done it under Republican presidents. Republicans have done it under Democratic presidents. It is an obligation, a constitutional obligation of our country to pay our bills. And by the way, it doesn't just throw the American economy into chaos. It throws the world economy into chaos if America defaults on our bill. This is the default on America bill that they passed. It is uh, absolutely atrocious, and it shows that they can't govern. We will be monitoring these debt ceiling negotiations and waiting with bated breath to see how the budget conversations shake out. Uh, Congresswoman, I want to move to abortion rights because this is something at the forefront of the minds of folks out there in this country. And the reality is that there are a lot of um, your Republican colleagues in Congress who actually support a national abortion ban. Can, can you just break this down for us? Because uh, I frankly think Americans should be concerned about the prospect of a national abortion um, ban or just restrictions potentially coming out of the House of Representatives. But you serve there every day. What say you? I agree with you. Um, they have had dozens and dozens of their members voting for a national abortion ban. Many senators have uh, introduced and telegraphed that they want a national abortion ban. You are seeing it in states across the country with Republican legislatures passing essentially what amounts to abortion bans in their states, even though their constituents do not want that. And that's the thing here, Simone. I mean, Republican, independent, and Democratic people across this country want us to keep abortion safe and legal. It's even gone to the ballot, as you know, in Republican states. And people have preserved the right to abortion, but now legislatures are continuing to try to turn it back. And I think that we are in a grave crisis. You know, I never thought that my daughter would have fewer rights mm. than I did. And the idea that we are going to, and you know, Simone, it's it's black and brown, indigenous, poor women across this country that are going to be particularly disproportionately burdened. And if, uh, you know, I'm glad that the Supreme Court kept Mifepristone available, but I don't know for how long that is. And I think we have to be very clear that this is an attempt by Republicans to strip away our economic freedom. This is mm. about freedom. It's about family. It's about being able to decide when we want to have a family and take care of our families. And it's fundamentally about our freedoms. And Republicans are against all of that. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, I continue to ask, where are the bills that regulate what men can do with their bodies? Thank you for your time today, ma'am. Very good to see you. Thank you, Simone.